Welcome to the Aaron Harbor Show. I'm joined by actor John Reese davis You might recognize him as Gimli in the Lord of the Rings movies or from his voice in other films such as Aladdin and SpongeBob SquarePants. In this show, we talk about Western civilization and the many cultural conflicts it faces today. So what do, in your opinion, what do some of those numbers mean? What does the, the future hold uh, given the numbers that you've seen and that concern you? We're heading for a British population of around, around about 80 million. Somewhere around, I would have thought, uh, the mid-century, which isn't that far away. Now, no one's actually asked the British people whether they really want 80 million people in their country. Uh, no one has actually pointed out that, effectively, they are going to be replaced by the new migrants. Does that necessarily, I mean, is that necessarily a bad thing? You know, most societies prosper when there is an influx of, of new people and new blood. I mean, when you think about the, you know, the French Huguenots come, being driven out of France and coming to England, that they become the basic backbone of the Industrial Revolution there. I mean, they become eventually the, the Darwins and the Wedgwoods and people like that. So, at one level, that's not a bad thing. The problem is that a substantial portion of these people um, have an ideology that is not really compatible with Western European Christian civilization. It is, of course, Islam. And, I mean, I've lived around the world. I grew up in Africa, uh, so I was taught to respect Islam. But there is no country in the world other than possibly one or two of the Malaysian states that is Muslim, functions well, and is in any way democratic. Islam is a catastrophe for those bright, brilliant Middle Eastern people. There's nothing wrong with the Iranian brains or, or, or the Iraqi brains. You know, they're bright people, they're clever people. They could do extraordinary things. They're just bound up with this medieval, life-denying system of belief that they are anxious to export around the world. And, and it's not compatible with so many things, not compatible with human dignity, you know. Um, the idea that the Holy Quran actually regulates the position of women in terms of, of, of her relationship with men in society is, to me, not good. The idea that, in fact, slavery is still being justified in, because that's what the prophet, you know, what the prophet uh, advocated uh, is anathema to me. And in parenthesis, let me say, I'm appalled that the African-American community is not more active, both vocally and in trying to change things, vis-a-vis uh, -vis their own experience of slavery, which is the most recent experience of mankind. Uh, change things in what way? Well, to begin with, they should be recognizing that real slavery is back. What's happening to the Yazidi people uh, and to some of the Christians there is monstrous. But it is, it is not just the, exploita the exploitation that takes place in a savage war. It is being justified as being okay according to the Quran. Now where are you talking about in terms of? I'm talking about in, in, in Syria. Um, uh, Islamic State is, um, and I do prefer to call it Islamic State, As not ISIS to, or, or, Daesh. or the Daesh or something like that. It is Islamic State. And the reason that I am saying that is to try and bring them home that there is a state that is at war with us and trying to pretend 
that they are not at war with us is, is just fatuous, it's just ridiculous. What should we do? Start with the Islamic State. How do you think we should address that? Because one of the developments which is, I think, challenging is that uh, in recent months there seems to be military progress uh, against the Islamic State, yet there seems to be a growing disconnection with the Islamic State or Daesh's lack of military success and its ability to attract people from all over the world. In other words, even though they, you may believe they're losing territory, they're still, when it comes, for example, to social media, being just as effective if not more effective than they ever were. I think you're spot on there. I, I, I hate to say this, but the truth of the matter is, what is wrong in the Middle East is Islam itself. It is Islam itself that will not let peace come to that place. And I think we have to attack the ideology of Islam. I realize that this is, is not a smart move for anyone to say, particularly not an actor. Um, but I really, do, I, I really do think that. I mean, I think we have to take the ideology of Islam and really challenge it. And that's completely against all our traditions. I mean, your country is, is founded on the principle, you know, that, that a man's religion is not going to affect anything. Uh, you know, there is a division between church and state, and you can be what you want to be, you know. It, this is a new world. This is a different way of organizing things. But we have, for example, you mentioned the United States. In the United States, we have uh, numerous religions uh, some which vehemently disagree with others. We have many, we have millions of U.S. citizens who are Muslim, who uh, belong to uh, one variation or another of uh, Islamic religion. And make a wonderful contribution to your society. Absolutely. These are people who are teachers, they're doctors, they're in law enforcement, they serve in the military, and yet they practice their faith. Uh, they believe in America's traditions, the melting pot concept, the Constitution. So how, how have we been so successful in that assimilation? How does America turn one generation of refugees, financial or economic or whatever refugees, into American citizens? I don't know. I, I, all I can tell you is in Britain we have failed dismally. We don't know how to do it. We could try and learn from you guys, but right at the moment, what we are doing is actually just creating ghetto societies that are getting larger and challenging the very, you know, the very fabric of, I mean, they're challenging the basic idea of common law, for instance, that, that you know, Islamic law should, should replace uh, common law. Or supersede. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, I think the last thing said that 75% of Muslims living in Britain believed that Sharia was, uh, you know, was a better system to, uh, a preferable system to, to live under than, than, than English law and, and that it should replace it. This is not good for the future of a society. But the, in terms of war, we are limited by our own codes of behavior. I, Islamic State is successful because it inaugurates a, a reign of terror so profound that it would certainly oblige me to comply. I mean, the idea, for instance, of stringing up a group of people and dropping them into an acid tank to kill them. The idea of trying to enforce conversions of Christian families by taking a 14-year-old boy uh, and in front of his father 
peeling the skin off his fingers. I mean, nightmare things. Now, if you're going to be involved in a war like that, which is a psychological war, you have to get back into your enemy's head. And my suggestion would be a, very, a variant of the great, wasn't it Pershing's great, uh, great, great thing? When you take, um, when you find dead IS bodies, you desecrate them in the appropriate way. You bury them with pig entrails and things like that. You create a, a, a monstrous machine as IS does, where you're, what you're going to do is you're going to freeze bodies with nitrogen, pulp them, throw in some pig entrails as well, and just let them ooze into the desert. No entry to heaven. Allah does not want you if you're, if you're coming like that. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk more with John about these solutions and others in just a moment. For information on how to help promote civil and mutually respectful discourse and support expansion of the distribution of our programs, please email info at harbortv.com. Join me and watch the Aaron Harbor Show. Watch the Aaron Harbor Show. Watch the Aaron Harbor Show. Watch the Aaron Harper Show. Watch the Aaron Harper Show. I'm Reverend Jesse Jackson. Watch the Aaron Harper Show and keep hope alive. I'm Aaron Harbor, host of the Aaron Harbor Show. I very much would like to hear from you about the program, so please send me an email with your thoughts. You can suggest what topics I should cover, what guests I should invite to be on the show, or even what specific questions you would like me to ask. This is your program, so send your suggestions to Aaron at HarborTV.com. I promise to personally read every one, so email me today. And most of all, thanks for watching. The Aaron Harbor Show may be viewed 24-7 at no charge from any location in the world at www.HarborTV.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm with actor John Rhys Davis talking about his perspective on the future of Western civilization. With that approach, the approach you just, just discussed, potentially very effective, obviously contrary to... All our fundamental values and traditions. Right. So two things. Can we win this, can we win this battle uh, adhering to those traditions, though clearly in a certain respect it makes it more difficult, number one. And number two, uh, certainly the call has gone out uh, for those people of faith, of Muslim faith and leadership uh, to very proactively disavow Daesh or ISIS or the Islamic State. And the argument's been made that uh, it's not truly uh, a religion that this is a group, as you described it, of, of murderous thieves, among other things, uh, who are using the religion as a front to organize and to attract people. But if you look at their behavior, their behavior so contradicts so many things in Islamic, in almost any version of the Islamic religion, whether you're Sunni, Shia, or whatever, that and the argument's been made that, that this is not truly, in any real sense, an Islamic group, but is using Islam as their device, as their mechanism to create the state that they want. Is that, so, so respond to those concepts. I think that there is violence right from the origin of Islam. Islam actually was forged in violence and slavery. And although it talks about, you know, the peace, in truth, the world is divided between the Da' al-Islam, the house of submission, or the house of peace, and the Da' al-Harb, the house of war. And we are of the house of war. And until we are all brought uh, into submission to the will of Allah, there will always be a tension between us. 
And uh, if you look at the history of almost any major religion, whether Christianity, Judaism, whatever, there's certainly been centuries of slavery being approved, slavery part of that religion. You look at the United States, where we enshrine slavery in our constitution initially. So is this a function well, of the time? you didn't enshrine it. Um, I mean, he was trying to... He was trying to avoid that, wasn't he, Jefferson? I mean, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But it did not apply to black people. Well, that's right. I mean, Locke originally said life, liberty, and property, didn't he? And that's why the pursuit of happiness comes in, because Jefferson was trying to avoid um, the suggestion that property, i.e. slave property, was invi inviolable. So I'm not excusing what, uh, clearly, what, what ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, whatever is, is doing, but what they're doing isn't new to the world. And so the question is, how do we, how do we address that effectively? And I mean, you, you, <laughs> you provided some suggestions, but <laughs> is there a way to do it within the confines of the, the standards, the, the, the ethics, the rules uh, that, that we subscribe to and that are so important to Western civilization. And if we go the route that you suggested, are we undermining uh, our own civilization? Yes, we are. But I think we are, we are faced with a dilemma. I mean, the population gearing is already set. I remember, um, you remember Dennis Miller? I went on Dennis's show a couple of times, and I said, look, I've seen these figures. To me, they are pretty catastrophic, but I must be wrong. Dennis would agree with you. Yeah, they must be, they must be wrong. It's just that I can't see how they're wrong. And I think the only, uh, and I invited his audience basically to sort of tell me that, uh, you know, where I was wrong. Uh, the only answer Dennis got back was from, uh, Professor Bernard Lewis, I believe, uh, the, the, you know, the, the great historian of Islam, who said John is right. By the end of the century, Europe will be uh, an Islamic continent. And I'm, we are now into, I think we're now into a real struggle for survival. And if we lose Western European Christian civilization over there, the only place left to defend it will be with you. Uh, and God knows what happens to our lot. I mean, I mean, I like Western European civilization. It brings us opera. It brings us ballet. It brings us more music alone than anything that's ever occurred in the, throughout Islam. It also brings us freedom. It brings us freedom. Probably the, probably the most important element of all yeah. those. And we've also abolished slavery, uh, which is not a bad thing in itself. We'll be right back with more from actor John Rhys Davis. For information on how to help promote civil and mutually respectful discourse, and support expansion of the distribution of our programs, please email info at harbortv.com. I'm Aaron Harbour, host of The Aaron Harbour Show. I very much would like to hear from you about the program, so please send me an email with your thoughts. You can suggest what topics I should cover, what guests I should invite to be on the show, or even what specific questions you would like me to ask. This is your program, so send your suggestions to Aaron at harbortv.com. Dot com. I promise to personally read everyone, so email me today. And most of all, thanks for watching. The Aaron Harbour Show may be viewed 24-7 at no charge from any location in the world at www.harbortv.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm with actor John Rhys Davis talking about his perspective on the future of Western civilization. Uh, I mean, all, all I want to say is that I think that our alternatives 
are pretty grim. The pressures of, of, of migration, the probable a scenario where there isn't work available because the new technology you know, are going to replace workers. And, and perhaps what we should be doing is, is retaining our individual rights as states to, to regulate uh, migration in terms of need, making sure that we establish or re-establish connections with, with people with whom we have a common interest and get away from this notion that we have to accept every refugee from a, a, a zone that is born in hell virtually. Um, I mean, the new ploy is you come to England, you claim that you have become a Christian, and you then appeal for political asylum because apostasy in Islam is a death, a, is a death sentence. So you cannot be sent back to your place like that. I mean, this is a mockery of the Western tradition of liberality and hospitality. Everyone's gaming the system. That's right. Fascinating. And, 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 and the poor devils who are most immediately affected by it, you know, the working class people, are demonized because they're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, our entire community is changing. We are being driven out. There's a wonderful documentary the BBC did the other day about the end of, 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 the, um, uh, uh, of the Cockneys, the London Cockneys. They've been literally driven out of their areas. Some of them done well. They've become taxi drivers in Essex and got nicer houses. But the whole community has changed. And, and sometimes communities need to change. But don't demonize those who are saying, wait a minute, we are being replaced. And governments just do not listen to the ordinary, the ordinary cries of the ordinary people. And, and my, fellow art, my, my fellow artists, we should be liberal. And I mean liberal in the European sense, not, not your pejorative sense of liberal. We should be open-handed and open-hearted and, and welcome outsiders. But no one is actually speaking for the people whose lives may be completely destroyed in a few years' time. And if the scenario, the alternative scenario that I'm suggesting is possible, the displacement by robots uh, and, 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 and modern technology of the jobs of ordinary people, <clears throat> then you're setting up the conditions for real social conflict because the indigenous population is going to be fighting with the new population for survival. No one is thinking ahead, and that's the real concern. Is it possible, last question, I mean, one of the challenges is that when anyone raises these kinds of issues, uh, one of the first responses one typically sees is that you're accused of being a bigot, you're accused of being a racist, it seems so difficult to even just have these conversations, including here in the United States. Is it similar in the UK or not? Oh, very much so. Very much so. I, I, when I first raised this issue about population and the suggestion that, you, you, you know, that we, that Western European Christian civilization was in danger of being uh, replaced by Islam in Europe, um, my manager, um, my, my agent in England called up was talking about you know, people for a, a new series that they were doing for the BBC. And my name was mentioned, and the guy said, good Lord, no, we can't employ Rhys Davis. He's a, he's a, he's a neo-fascist, ne ne national front guy. Um, well, I didn't think I was, to be honest with you. But, you know, I've, you know I, I get talked to by people who are, are farmers in New Zealand. And we're having, in the Waikato region of New Zealand, we're having at least one suicide by a farmer a week. 
I talk to people who are just about to be displaced in the steel mill uh, uh, in Waiuku or in Australia, or I go down to Pens uh, to to to, to um, you know to West Virginia and talk to people down there. There is a complete sense of abandonment by the by this this idealistic sort of big corporate, big vision, big states dealing with big trade deals that are completely, completely ignores the lives and livelihoods of ordinary people. We are, we are dangerously separating um, the governance of our countries from the interests of the people in the countries. And that's so dangerous. Everyone who's advocating Britain remains in Europe uh, is connected to big business, is connected to banking, is connected to you know, people who've got deals with Europe and all that sort of thing. They are willing to sell the, the, the country's sovereignty purely for immediate financial interests, and that's appalling. Uh, no one is prepared to really look at the problems. You think we have problems of, of migration from Africa now. Population of Africa now is 1.1 billion. By the end of the century, it's going to be over 4 billion. A country that I knew when I was a boy, Ethiopia, in 1950, it had a population of 18 million. Do you remember all those famine relief things that we had in the 70s and 80s? Sure. At that period, the average, Ameri uh, the average Ethiopian woman was producing, had seven births, had producing seven babies. But how many survived? Good question. Now it's down to 4.5. They reckon by 2050, it'll be down to 3.5. At the end of the century, hopefully it will be down to 2.5 live births per woman, at which time the population of Ethiopia has gone up to something like 240 million. I, I, I know the country. I can just tell you now, there is no way that a decent standard of living for 240 million Ethiopians can possibly be got, given their history, given their social divisions, and given the basic poverty of the country. You cannot have it. They will, they will have to migrate. Right. And, and actually, that kind of extrapolation, and in, in whether or not it occurs, applies to many, many other countries. Yes, it is. But Africa in particular. Africa is having a population explosion at the moment at a time when a lot of the, of the countries that had contraception early on are exper experiencing a real decline in population. And, and I mean, that just, it's, it's, it's an enormous challenge, and there must be some good and rational and sensible way to, to address it. It's just that nobody's bloody doing it. All right. Well, we've started the conversation, and we will next talk about some solutions. John, thank oh. you. Thank you so much for so much of your time. Thanks. My pleasure. That was John Rhys Davis. I'm Aaron Harbour. Thanks for watching. Please contact us. We want to hear from you. And thanks for watching.